Hey, this is Sam from Vim. Today we're going to be looking at the warning extractor report. So let's dive right into it. Um, as many of you may know, Revit has some of the worst warning explanation and interfaces uh, possible. So you have to open a different link project to see the warning and select them. And it's really hard to get the IDs and just navigate these lists of thousands of warnings or hundreds of warnings. So this report is really helpful for navigating that and making it accessible to people who don't have Revit, as well as just determining a kind of game plan to get through all the warnings. So at the top left, what we'll see is the models. So this is going to be your main model as well as the link models. If you want, you can uh, just simply focus on one or two of the models. In this case, I'll leave it to select all. Then we see the warning severity. So obviously high severity warnings are going to be, you know, more uh, bad. So if we click on high, we'll be able to see what is uh, selected. <clears throat> Same thing with medium and low. And if we de-click, uh, if we click again, it deselects. So down here, we see the list of the inventory of the warnings and it's organized by warning, severity. I'm sorry, it's organized by model, severity, warning, category, family type, and Revit ID. That's a lot of categorization, right? So if you're not familiar, there is the drill up and drill down in Power BI. So this will allow us to really look, uh, for example, here we see that there's a lot more warnings in the architecture model and the site model has the least amount of warnings. When we drill down, we can get more of a breakdown. So we see a lot of the warnings in the architecture are low priority or low severity warnings, I should say. So let's drill and get into this. So we'll analyze the architecture warnings uh, that are high severity and we can drill further down here. So these elements are completely inside of one another. In this case, we're looking at walls, which is the category, and then this is the name of the family. We can get the type and the Revit IDs. Now, look at what happens when we click here. Bum, bum, bum. There's no geometry. So what happens is that the Vim report starts with the list of the warnings, not the list of what's on the screen. So if for some reason there's no geometry or that geometry is hidden in the particular view that was exported, it's going to show up as no geometry. This is actually good because that means we're not skipping any warnings, uh, despite the fact that it may not be present in the view or, or for whatever reason. Perhaps it's a closed work set, perhaps it's uh, something else. In this case, if we look at it here, we've got 6442322. So we're going to go look for that here. Um, 6442322. Boom. And we can tell that the wall is selected in here. I've, I've already made a section box by using my selection box here. And what I'm going to do now is isolate that element. So we see that it's basically a typical behavior. If there's a wall in a wall in Revit, it will not have a geometry. If I move that wall out of the other wall that's on top of it, it will emerge again. There's another example here where uh, we have identical instances in the same place. And what's happening here is a copy monitor workflow. So if we look at some of the light fixtures, we'll see that these identical instances are not showing up because there's been a copy monitor workflow. And in the view that we've extracted, the work set has been turned off. Now the error is still here. This is why it shows up in the list. But when you click on it, you'll notice that there is no geometry. So just make sure that you, know, you can use the technique I just showed you to go um, look at the Revit ID inside of Revit, and then you'll see, oh, it's on a work set that's closed in that view. Oh, the wall is inside of another wall, and so on and so on. So just to give you a little bit of an idea on how to troubleshoot when you see that there's no geometry found, you can go and enter that Revit ID and figure out the nitty gritty detail for yourself. 
Uh, with that being said, let's look at instances where this is not problematic. So, um, and, and we can look at the interface a little bit more. So all of these elements have an identical instance on top of it, whether it's in the same model or not. So this is obviously very dangerous because if we start counting these desks, well, we're gonna be buying a lot more desks that are not gonna be used and the client's gonna be paying for things that are not required, so that's bad. Um, and just to go a little bit deeper into the data, here is a summarized uh, error warning. So error warnings in Revit are not known to be the most user-friendly descriptions and sometimes they're quite long paragraph almost. So if you want the full error warning, you can scroll to the right and see what it's about. And sometimes it'll give you a little piece of advice on how to fix it or a little bit of a hint on what the issue is, a little bit less mysterious. But here we see that um, you know there's multiple spaces in the same region. That's the gist of it, as well as the categorization of what the issue is. Is it a railing issue? Is it a room issue? Is it a wall issue? So that way it helps you kind of uh, categorize and clump issues together. So uh, last tip I'll give you is that if you want to extract this, let me, um, let me just do this for a second. Okay, so I've drilled down all the way to the bottom and now I can do export data. So I'm just going to export it this way, very simple. And once I've saved this file, I have everything in Revit, I mean in Excel. So here, if I want to have all the Revit IDs, all of my warnings in a very legible, easy to understand way, this is so much better than what Revit gives us, as well as obviously the Power BI, where you get the uh, 3D model associated with your data. So one last thing is that if you want, you can simply share this model with the stakeholders. So if the manager is not sure if there even is a need to go fix the errors in the model and what those errors imply, they can get into the data without having to open Revit, without having to open all of the other links and really get wise very quickly. So that's it. I hope that was helpful and see you in the next video.